hung out outside of the gate here, always dreaming about being on the inside. It had been my boyhood dream to work as a Disney animator. The idea that I could do something like that and make a living out of it. I was going to be a Disney animator from six years old. started at Disney in 1974, January of 1974, which means I think that I'm, I'm getting close to 40 years at this you point. You have another year to go. To I have another year before I'm, before it's 40 years. I'm a kid next to him, but I know I, uh, I've we're, only we're been the, here, we're the same, we're the same age, age, but now we, I yeah. think sometimes I'm older. I've been here for 36 years. I've known Ruben uh, for 31 years and he's, he's yeah. been here. In, Early uh, 80s, yeah. And Mark, was, when did you start? 80. So we've kind of been at this together for a long time. We're inspired as we see the work that other people are doing. Talents that come out of Norway. In many cases, these are younger artists who saw Little Mermaid when they were kids. <laughs> One thing that, that made me realize that I wanted to be an artist was The Little Mermaid. The first time I saw Little Mermaid, I was in Korea and my dad went on a business trip and he brought back the laser disc and I was already just like, oh, so excited. The moment you see those waves and the dolphins and the boat coming through the fog, I was like, oh, I want to do this. It was the first film that someone growing up in my generation we could relate to. Like she does a lot of things that are wrong and doesn't listen to her parents and everything. After I saw it for the first time, I, you know, immediately went home and was trying to draw Ariel and Flounder. And of course I, I actually had a crush on Ariel as a as a <laughs> child. So. What is interesting for me particularly is this performance was something different. This was fresh and new and she felt like a real girl to me. And I think it kind of paved the way for female heroines after that. At the time, I watched the Disney Channel, and they used to do this segment where they would showcase kids' drawings, and this little, like, Mickey's hands would run into the frame, and he'd put a piece of paper on a refrigerator, and my mom helped me pick out one of my drawings, and I sent it to them, and they put it on TV. And it was awesome. So, and that, I think, also signified, like, okay, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. My freshman year of college, I got to work at Disneyland. It was so much fun. The lovely man that was in charge of that program, he arranged for me to come up to the studio here and spend a couple days following around a couple of the animators. I pulled up to the gate and I gave the guard my name, and this was the first time I had ever been on the other side of the gate, and the guard said, they're expecting you. And I, like, I think I audibly squealed. <laughs> first day that I, I actually visited the studio, I met Eric Larson, who was one of the nine old men. Those were the ones that Walt kind of leaned on the most as his core group of animation artists. The key group of people who worked with Walt Disney, going back to Snow White, Bambi, Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, were still making the films at that point. When I look at Peter Pan, that's Disney really firing on all cylinders. All the nine old men were working on it. It's so artfully handled in every way. So you had these animators in their 60s teaching what they knew to us kids. So it's like learning how to, to hit a baseball from uh, Ted Williams or something, you know. It's just you were learning from the, the greatest uh, of all time, really. I started here, we first did a tour of the studio lot, and I remember John Cars walked up to our group and he was introduced and he was gonna be one of the mentors. It was just like, wow, here's John Cars, this really important person, and he's gonna be mentoring us. I remember thinking at least once or twice that first day that I really just wanted to break into song. I just wanted to start singing Under the Sea or something because I felt that music just needed to be happening all the time here. <laughs> It didn't, thankfully, but it could still happen, I guess. <laughs> Somehow, I felt like I was at home. I felt 
this is the place that I am supposed to be. One of the ladies uh, next to me who had kind of organized that day, she said, welcome to heaven. And I was just like, absolutely, this is animation heaven. It's more than I ever thought it could be. or around April Fool's Day, basically everyone in the studio is encouraged to do caricatures. People can submit as many characters as you want. You get to all walk around and see who got gotten. <laughs> Everybody has to put their name on the caricature, so you can't just do these anonymously. John Musker does a thousand, I swear, every year. I've been told that he spends all-nighters just trying to get as many victims as he can. He isn't necessarily what some people would call a kind caricaturist. He kind of takes his... I just draw it the way I see it. I don't know. He gets everybody, so there's no way to avoid it. So I'm just um, teeth and hair. That's basically all it is. It's a great event because you really get to see everybody's different styles and takes on people. <laughs> there really is such a rich group of artists that you get to work with and, and no two days sort of are the same. So I come in and I sit with my office mate, Hyunmin Lee, and we usually, you know, start animating our scenes and somebody will say something and it will trigger just this endless flow of Little Mermaid quoting. <laughs> I keep my guitar with me in my office, so when I'm taking a break, it just refreshes me to pick up the guitar and just play a little bit. We haven't started the new Disney band yet, but that's, that's in the plan. I share an office with uh, another artist, Lorelai Bove, and she and I have started baking and like making this sort of little cafe in our office. She'll put out donuts or something one day and we'll try to have like wine or something in the evening. It always just like totally chokes me up because you get to you get to come here with your like Disney family and it just makes me so thankful for my job every single day. People from outside would ask what made Disney animation so special. And one thing Walt said was that Disney animators didn't just draw funny cartoons. They did a lot of study and research to make their animation believable. That was one of the hallmarks of Disney early on, and I would say we still do that. Think about, like, Ursula. When you see her as an octopus or part octopus, you think, well, of course, she has to be that way. There's no other way that she could be, but you know that it wasn't easy to get to that elegant solution. When you find those little bits of life that you can put into your work, then people just immediately start empathizing with these characters. It's really about acting and good acting and getting inside the head of the characters and finding what they're thinking. Don't animate the words, animate what the character's thinking and feeling inside that caused them to say those words in the first place. The big thing was not making characters move, but making characters that moved us. Walt was always a champion of new technologies, so he would be the first to applaud all the new changes uh, happening now with computer animation. One really neat example of technology is the Paper Man short that was just recently produced here uh, and actually won the Academy Award. Winning Paper Man was a surreal experience. I remember when I got up to the microphone, it was, I could tell it was one of those ones that they could control remotely, like a telescopic thing, and it was kind of low. And I was this close to saying, can you raise the microphone, please? Which would have been probably the most idiotic thing an Oscar winner ever did. Principles we learned from the nine old men are the same ones that hopefully we passed on to some of the new people. That makes me feel, I'm sure you two are, that we're part of this tradition that lives on. We have access to these legends who learned from the nine old men, the original animators. So they're still in the building. 
there's always somebody that I've admired my whole life that I'll run into or I'll get some piece of inspirational wisdom from. That's the greatest thing in the world, to be able to pass that on. In some ways, when you're very young and you, you almost feel like there was this great period at Disney and they did these wonderful, wonderful films and, and will anything like that ever happen again? Then you realize, really, in some ways, it's just beginning. When I look at Peter Pan or, or any of those classics, I feel like what we're doing right now does justice. Just knowing that I'm continuing that legacy keeps me going every day. Dreamed about being here your whole life. It's an awesome thing.